He's getting a lot of love. Um, let's listen to his post-fight interview. He had a lot of fans travel out for him. So listen, you know now, you know IBF 135 pound champion of the world. Now shit is about to get really serious. Now if you don't know, he has um, Ranches Bartholomew's uh, vacated um, title. He's now fighting at 140 pounds. But listen, when it comes to that 135 pound um, uh, um, weight division, it's pretty it's, it's, it's pretty stacked. When you look at um, Jorge Linares, who's going to be taking on uh, Anthony Carolla. When you look at um, Jose Felix, when you look at uh, Felix Badejo, you know, um, of course we know what's going on with him. Uh, Terry Flanagan. I'm thinking, what route does he take? Now, when you're an IBF champion, the IBF is considered to be the most stringent and strict of the, uh, damn, Dana? Danny Jacobson, if you, you know, she can get it. But anyway, um, they're known as being the most strict and stringent of the uh, boxing organizations between the WBC, the WBO, and the WBA. Now, in my opinion, when it comes to the most strict, it's the IBF, the WBC, the WBO, and then the WBA. Just my personal opinion. But um, now I'm interested to see where he goes next. Now, the new rankings for the IBF, um, I don't believe is out yet. Right now, it's September the 9th, 2016, 10.09 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So basically, the IBF rankings should be out. But remember, if you're a champion, you have to fight somebody in the top 15 or a unification of whatever sanctioning body that you're in. So when it comes to the IBF, he already defeated Richard Kami. Um, or Kome, you know, you have um, Jose Felix, uh, Felix Verdejo, uh, Dennis uh, Sharifkov, Edith Tatri, Stefan Orman, you know, a lot of these fighters don't even know, you know, outside of uh, Mickey Bay, um, who that's a good fight, you know, that, that can probably be made because Mickey Bay is a made with a promotions guy, and, um, and uh, Easter about billions, Heyman guy, you know, so it's a fight that can be made, but you know, now it's going to be interesting to see like where he goes from here. Also, you have to give him credit. Dude has a chin. He took some crazy shots from Komei. Now, going into this fight, um, I wish I was able to cover it earlier in the week like I wanted to because I would have said that, listen, Richard, uh, Richard Komei is not no joke. You know, I've seen him fight before on Box Nation, and I know that he, you know, he's a hard puncher. You know, and he has a lot of uh, knockouts. If I'm correct, before this fight, um, he was 25 and 0 with 22 KOs or something like that, and it showed. The shots that he was hitting Robert Easter Jr. with, to the, it was one knockdown in the eighth round. And he hit him so hard to the point where his glove barely, barely, barely. Listen, it's like a, it's like a fucking hair, like a nano hair, like, like touched the canvas. You know, but then, you know, Robert Easter, looking at the fight, he was the more stylistic, the more... Um, I don't want to say the, the clean. He was the cleaner puncher. I don't want to say the aggressor because uh, Komei was the aggressor. But it was easy to see, you know, that um, Robert Easter was the one who looked more comfortable in the fight and the one, you know, who should have won the fight as he didn't. It was a close fight. It was a really, really close fight. But like I said, um, the sky's the limit for dude. And also, in my opinion, he's better than Adrian Broner was at 135 pounds. In my personal opinion. He is. You know, um, I am Tishri Controversy. This is Tishri Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here. I wouldn't be surprised if he fights uh, Mickey Bay next. I would not be surprised. You know, or um, Yvonne Mindy. Yvonne Mindy had beat uh, Luke Campbell. 
You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, go look at the IBF rankings. Remember, since he's the IBF champion, he has to fight somebody ranked in the top 15 of the IBF to defend his title, or he has to fight um, in a unification. Now, like I said, you know, you have good names like Jose Felix, Felix Padejo, um, Sharif Akhov, I believe I saw him fight before. He's good. You got uh, Miguel Vasquez. You know, there's some, there's some fights out there for him, but it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. Um... I'm impressed. You know, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the fact that he was able to keep his composure, but also I'm impressed by his chin. You have to mind my voice. Um, it's been a long week. For those who know, I had some issues with my truck, and um, it's really messed my week up. I really wanted to promote this fight early in the week. As you know, I didn't even do one video on the fight. You know, so, you know, I'm kind of pissed off at that, especially since I've been doing all this Golovkin versus Brooke. Um, uh... Uh, promotion. People think like, oh, well, what happened to um, the Easter fight? But dude is good. So listen, I'm going to be covering every one of his fights from now on. You know, there's going to be prediction videos for his fights. And it's a shame because this fight was in Reading, PA. And I'm in Philly. It only takes about an hour and a half to get there. But, you know, something happened with my truck. I couldn't get there. Long story. Um, Tissue Controversy. This is Tissue Controversy Live. Please subscribe. All the links to my social media right down below in the description box. Please subscribe.